In this video, I go over what is Linux, why people use it, and what people use it for. So what is Linux? Well, it's a completely free operating system that runs on pretty much anything. And uh, Windows, you know, much like people think, hey, it's an operating system, it runs just on a select few PCs, where Linux is far more robust, compact, slim, lightweight, all these things are attributed to Linux. And that's why it runs on PCs, it runs on servers, it runs on smart TVs, it runs on set top boxes, it runs in your phone. That's uh, what is Linux. I mean, Linux is, it makes all those things run. It makes them go. It makes it to where those screens, all those devices can all talk together. It's basically a low level software that sits and makes everything run. And that is what Linux is, and I'll get into where it comes from. So why all that sounds great, where did it come from? What was its origin? Well, it was based on Unix, which I've already kind of said, but Unix was created by Bell Laboratories in 1969. And it stayed that way until the early 80s, where a guy named Linus Torvalds picked it up and said, hey, I want to create that, but I want it to be more for an academic space. I want it to be completely open and free. So he was the one to actually pick that torch up and, and basically the creator of Linux. Um, and then he opened that up and started sharing it with other academics. And those guys basically just grabbed any piece of hardware they could find and just scavenged up everything from personal computers to little handhelds, just anything they could get their hands on that they could install uh, the Linux kernel on. And uh, they basically documented, and they, they were the early pioneers of uh, Linux. And for good reason, I mean, this is just, or just an amazing thing. And it really wasn't until uh, 1991, I believe it was, where Linus was able to actually go and really start to collaborate with these guys and really uh, pull together a big team to really uh, release the first version of Linux. And two years after this was done in 1993, Linux already had over 12,000 users. That's kind of amazing because of just the amount of growth. And also, you got to remember back then, I mean, it was just Mac and Windows. And hell, I mean, I guess today you could honestly say it's just Mac and Windows. And then uh, Linux is kind of an afterthought in the desktop computer space. But you fast forward to today and... Uh, it's almost used. It's almost in every single server environment. Hell, it is in every single server environment. There's not uh, practically any any place I can think of that doesn't have Linux as far as data centers go. So for data centers, when I say almost everything uses it, you've got web servers, almost 90% or more web servers use Linux. Uh, you have all your smart TVs, pretty much use Linux nowadays. And Android is actually a modified Linux kernel, but it, it, you can debate this, but it actually uses Linux. So more than half the phones or smartphones in the world use Linux. Uh, it's a bit of a bold statement, but there's some truth to that. And I just kind of wanted to say, this is its origin story. This is where it's at and uh, where it could really expand or really improve on is actually desktop adoption, desktop environment adoption. And that's kind of why I made this channel because I love Linux. It's a great operating system, fantastic. All these other places use it. And I've made a separate video and I'll, I'll go ahead and tag it up there. Um, and that basically explains why people don't use it or why it isn't widely used in, in today's you know desktop world. But um, that is Linux's origin. So let's get into why people are using Linux, and it's everywhere, but it's extremely prevalent in the you know server world, 
or the data center world. And uh, I wanted to kind of get in that and touch on to the ma main points of why you see it on there and you also see it on smart TVs, you see it on a lot of different devices out there. The first thing I want to say about Linux is it's very, very stable. And when I say very stable, I mean there's screenshots of system admins that had a Linux box up for 10 years. 10 years without it even rebooting. That's a whole decade. That's amazing. Um, now, mind you, I don't think he's run. I think he was running offline with that, and it was running like an elevator system or something, uh, because I think all the comments were like, "Hey, you're going to get hacked. You haven't updated the security of that kernel in 10 years." But uh, that's another point altogether. Uh, it's amazing. It could run for 10 years straight, and it has. And people have screenshots of that. And that is uh, just a, a phenomenon in itself. So the second point is it runs on anything. And I do mean anything. We have an old laptop that's almost, I think it's eight or nine years. No, it's 10 years. It's 2008 when I bought that. It's a decade old itself. And I went ahead and loaded Linux on it because I think it was running Windows 7 at the time. And uh, it started really bogging down like Windows does. And I put Fedora on it. And I think it's running Fedora 27, so I need to upgrade that. But my wife uses it daily and she loves it it's still running great so uh, if you have an old laptop repurpose it put linux on it there's no reason to have like uh, an old version of windows on anything anymore it just doesn't really do anything for you other than just headache and heartache and uh, the third reason why uh, so many people use it is it's secure it's very very secure if you you know, install CentOS or Red Hat, it has security enhanced Linux, which is even more secure than the base Linux. And uh, you can put a whole range of things. This is one of the big reasons why a lot of web hosts and things of that nature use Linux because there's a lot less of a chance of a hack happening unless they didn't properly update like a PHP module or something of that nature and someone exploited it. But I don't want to get too much into that. Uh, I just want to say it's far more secure than Windows because Windows is closed source. We don't know what that source code is. And a lot of exploits are just there because there is no peer review. There's nobody out there looking at Windows code except for Microsoft. And if Microsoft finds something, they may or may not tell the public. Or they might just tell like the NSA and say, hey, I got this exploit, or the NSA might request a backdoor from Microsoft, which has happened to get into Windows. So that's a big problem and something Linux doesn't have. It's extremely secure. Governments can approach Linux and say, hey, we need a backdoor to snoop on people. That's pretty cool that Linux is open source and it has peer review, so that doesn't happen. And the final point, and it's a big one, it's free. So just to give it a perspective of how much money a business can spend on a server uh, or, or entire just licenses for Windows Server, I remember probably in, um, heck, just a couple years ago, buying a bunch of uh, Server 2016 licenses, and you can drop 10, 20K just on a handful of servers. That's insane. And just imagine you have racks and racks of servers. Um, you can easily blow through a quarter of a million to a million dollars. And if Linux can accomplish the same thing and be free and do it better, more secure, reliable, which one are you going to use? So that's why you see a lot more Linux and data centers. That's why you see Microsoft starting to come into the Linux community. It is starting to turn heads. Almost every data center is really heavy on virtualization except for Hyper-V, pretty much um, Zen Server and uh, VMware both use a Linux-based hypervisor. So um, that's pretty powerful. I mean, that's really powerful. And that is why people are using it and, and why it's such a fantastic operating system. But I wanted to just kind of make this video as an overview for new, new newcomers that are like, hey, I want to try out Linux. I want to do it. And as a system admin of, you know, 15 plus years, I wanted to just give my take on this question of what is Linux, why people use it and just why it's so awesome. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any feedback or comments, please let me know below. 
And if you'd like to see more tech videos, hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, chrisTitus.com.